Well, hello again, everyone. This is Clint Finney for another Eastern Ohio Grazing Council update, July the 30th, 2020. This week, I thought it would be interesting to look at some of the results of areas that I trampled a bunch of the excess growth from this spring during the spring flush. Use some ultra high stock intensity grazing techniques, some mob grazing, whatever you want to call it, trampled some forage. And uh, now that we've been dry at home, we're starting to see some of the results of doing that. So let's get started. Out in the field tonight and just thought it'd be a good idea to take a quick video, maybe for something I can include in a pasture walk update. This is June or July the 23rd. 2020 and I just moved the cows and the sheep if I can paint around there fast enough like you can catch some of them uh, cow birds flying in and out of the cows there's little Lenny the bull herd bull but uh, this is a field that we kind of trample grazed last time through I just looked back in my camera it was June 15th so we're almost getting we're, well we're over a month almost 45 days which is what i wanted to be but we haven't had any measurable rainfall here since about that time it's been almost a month we've had a couple of little showers now and then but nothing big and uh you can kind of see the grass and this is totally just a random spot that i'm picking out I, I didn't pick this for any reason at all but lots of good fescue growing up if we dig down in the thatch you see that stuff that we left behind right there um and, and that's kind of insulated the ground and kept some rain here and i took a picture last night or night before this was the first field that we really started trampling a lot the field next to it didn't and we just finished grazing it so it's not a fair comparison for this video but i'm gonna be surprised tomorrow if we don't find out there's a whole lot more forage in this field than there was in that one there and they were grazed about the same time so interesting results from trampling forage we did get what they said we would get some insulation some water retention yeah we got some dry dead stuff out there got some weeds too but there's that we can handle that right now what we really need is rain um, but this trampling forage may be the the key to dry summers uh, another two weeks if we don't get any more rain I'm gonna wish that we'd trampled a whole lot more it's funny the rain showers come from the west and just come 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 at us and and like in caddis it splits goes around us and then goes east and covers everything so me and my friend out the road are praying for rain and every day we watch it come and we watch it go and don't get any i'm not whining i'm not complaining it's just the way things are uh something we're not used to after the last several years of rain 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 all the time um gonna be hard to get used to the new normal so praying for rain but for now i, I figured tonight i got about a month's worth of forage calling for rain again monday hoping we get some of that I got some sorghum sedan planted, but it's not going to grow if it doesn't get any rain to sprout. So, came back up the next night after I took that last video. Just wanted to show what the sheep have took. I realized we're in the waning daylight here. Um, but I dug down in this same spot yesterday so you can kind of compare what they took. They just topped it. The interesting part about this, I didn't expect this size field to last the sheep for the whole day, and especially not till 8.30 at night. But I didn't get time to get up here and check them. But this field, as I said, was the first one that we trampled. The one next to it hadn't been trampled. I gave them the same size field here as I did over there and over there it was admittedly too small uh, I was moving them a couple hours short of 24 hours every time because they were too small here this is perfect I just topped it yeah for those of you that don't want all that dead grass hanging out in there 
it looks a little ugly, but it's really hard to measure. It's hard to use a rising plate meter or a stick or anything to know what was out here when we came in and what's out here now, but uh, this is kind of cool because that thatch has just held everything up. And good news, we got over an inch of rain last night. I guess I just need to complain about it on a video sooner to be able to get us some rain, but then this is the field that they're going into. I have pictures of this field that I'll share with this presentation when we grazed it the last time right about in this vicinity. And it didn't hardly look like it was grazed, but down where you can just see it over the edge, the, that was completely trampled, just flattened. And it's almost, ankle, well, it's almost knee high, clover down there. So we're just gonna run the steers and sheep across this, just top it a little bit, go on to the next field. The one right below this fence has uh, yet to be grazed for the year. Here we are, almost August 1st. Uh, we grazed a portion of it, I guess, but part of it hasn't been grazed at all. And I'd like to be grazing it and getting it back vegetative, but I've got some other things going on. And we got to graze the fields that got sorghum sedan planted in them. We got to graze the fields yet that we want to stockpile for the winter. So. It'll probably just sit there and we'll get back to it when we get done doing all those other things. But just wanted to share what this thatch did to us, what this compacted grass. And everybody says, well, you're wasting grass. Well, we just got that into rain last night. I, I got it confirmed today. We hadn't had more than an, a three quarters of an inch of rain in the last month. Now we had an inch last night. Of course everything's perking up a little bit but just for video's sake i'll dig down in the grass and you can see that thatch that's left in there that's just a small portion of it but that's what's there and of course now it's moist because we got the rain but sure held some moisture so sure grew some grass uh as we're looking at what to do in the spring and and how we can have more grass in a drier period or in the summer i'm really sold so far on trampling grass and 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 wasting it so to speak but allowing it to come back later and, and be this good looking in that video i talked about uh the picture that i had taken there a month ago when we grazed this field and I remember putting this in a presentation and say it doesn't look like they took very much but and sometimes pictures can be deceiving but they, they probably ate about a third of it they trampled a lot of that forage uh, especially right outside the view of, of this picture uh, most of the rest of the area was was pretty well trampled but at that time it was what we wanted to do we were uh, trying to get the steers to gain as much we're still trying to get the get steers to gain as much as they possibly can along with the the lambs that we have in there so uh, it was a good way to manage that last time and, and certainly got us some good growth this time, uh, even given that we haven't had or hadn't had a whole lot of rain. I'll also kind of talk a little bit there about those two videos in that what you saw. And, and if you look at the first video compared to the second one, it looks like I took a lot of forage out of that field instead of the two or three inches that I'm telling you I did. But you know, there's some trampling going on there too, and, and there's some light trampling. We're not trampling that as hard. The forage isn't as tall. And if you go back up there today and take a picture, it's all come back up as a result of the recent rains and the regrowths and everything. But that forage looks like it's shorter after grazing than it actually is. There's a whole lot of forage still left up there. I, I promise that we only took two, three inches of the forage that was there. Uh, and, and for those of you I mentioned several times in those videos that are worried about that standing dead forage, if you look at the first video of before they were grazed and the, the video after, you'll notice there's a lot of that standing dead forage that has disappeared. It's either been trampled or they nibbled at it as they went by. And so uh, I, I kind of see a scenario where here two or three more grazings through that field you won't even see that standing dead forage anymore. It'll be gone. It'll, it'll be either be eaten or be trampled. And I, I mentioned that I still had some fields that I, that I hadn't grazed yet this year. And uh, being that dry and, and the rains just finally started, at least I hope they started coming. Um, 
we did go ahead and, and get into some of those deferred areas. The areas that we planted uh, sorghum sedan just aren't growing. The, the perennial forages aren't growing, so it's not enough to shade out that sorghum sedan. And I decided with the stockpile grass, uh, we'll make that decision later. We'll either stockpile the areas that they're currently grazing right now, or we'll go back and just lightly top those fields later. Uh, it, it was just important to go ahead and get that grass back vegetative here in the next couple weeks. And, and then I, I just want a, a quick note. Um, I talk about these high stocking, high stocking density grazing techniques, ultra high stocking density grazing and mob grazing and, and all those kind of result in this trampled forage idea that, that we're talking about and we've talked about in, in other updates. Realize it, it also isn't for everyone. You know, I, I'm moving cows every 12 hours. The sheep and these stalker steers get moved every every 24 hours. I, I realize it's not for everyone. Not everyone has the ability or the want to to, to be able to fence paddocks smaller and trample forage earlier in the spring to get these kind of results. Some of us have other systems that work for us, and that's perfectly fine. I, I'm not trying to talk anyone into any one system. I'm just showing the results of, of what we've had happen at our farm. I also mentioned in that video uh, about a, a picture that uh, shows where we trampled grass and where we didn't. And uh, that picture is coming up here next, but I, just to give you a little background, this is the field right next to the one we've been showing here with all the videos and the pictures. Uh, this is a field we did not trample on floors. We just kind of grazed it, and this is actually at the end of that grazing event. We just kind of grazed it down uh, and left very little residue on the soil surface compared to the next field that we, we left a lot of residue on the surface. So just to give you a picture comparison of the next picture you're about to see. Side by side comparison uh, on the right is the field that we didn't trample a lot of forage. The left is one that we did. And I realize it's kind of hard to see because I drove the four wheeler through there and, and built a three strand temporary polywire fence there. But if you really look hard, you can see there's a whole lot more green, a whole lot taller growing forage on the left hand side than there is on the right. And, and for me, that just lends itself to show us how, how much having that extra litter or cover on the surface when you got as dry as we did helped to grow more forage in that field. Uh, again, not a great picture, not a great comparison, but these are pre-grazed and, and it just shows how much extra forage or better forage is in the part that we actually trampled. And people were concerned about trampling forage and, and waste and grass. And here we are, we trampled that, we wasted it, but we got more forage back on that next round through than on the other side. And I'm not saying the right-hand side was abused or overgrazed or anything. I'm just saying that we, we did it just a little bit different just to show uh, what we would have. We probably took as much forage out of the right-hand side as we had out of the left over these two grazing events. So it'll be interesting to see how that left side performs as the year goes by. I had some other thoughts I wanted to include in this update. Um, it's been really hot. Hopefully we've kind of seen the end of that hot period, at least above 90s. Uh, I know some folks have asked about shade and shelter and things, and I didn't feel like I had enough uh, time or information to talk a whole update about shade, and maybe I will in the future, but realize that uh, with management intensive grazing so much we're, we're thinking we're fencing them in a hard pasture and there's no shade and what are we going to do and I, I just want y'all to realize that this time of year it, it's okay if we have to fence them towards the shade one way or the other we have to give them an area of shade I guess the key for me uh, for shade is I can give them shade but I, I want to treat it just like the other pastures I want to move them on I don't want that to become a camp out spot somewhere they're going to go back to day after day after day and go back and get a bunch of flies and, and get muddy and all those things that they would get if they were going back to the same shade spot so just I hope you all have realized that we we have to we have to allow them some shade now and then our our gains will be better my rule of thumb at home is is 90 degrees if it gets to 90 degrees i've got to get them some shade somehow especially the cattle the sheep can handle a little bit higher temperature uh, but i usually have them mixed together anyway so at 90 degrees we give them some opportunity to get the shade remember you know these animals are only going to graze eight hours during the day they don't care whether it's eight hours at night or eight hours in the morning or eight hours in the evening 
So that daytime, they're really not grazing a whole lot. A lot of times in those warmer days, they're shading up and they're not grazing. So as long as we give them enough grass out in the sunlight fields and give them the opportunity to get the shade in those hot times, we're really not going to see uh, that much of a difference. The next thought was clipping. It's clipping season around here right now. I see a lot of folks out clipping. A lot of you have already clipped. I haven't clipped a thing yet or not much. Uh, we're going to start clipping some things here pretty soon. Uh, some of the fields I was going to clip that, that were the worst, I, it was the fields I planted Sergeant of Sedan in, and they don't need clip now because they all got kind of run over. So, uh, But one idea from from what I've seen out there, remember our, our grazing heights. You know, We talk about only grazing tall grasses to a four inch height. We need to remember that as we're clipping as well. Uh, too often I go out and I see places that have been clipped, that have been clipped closer than we would ever recommend they be grazed. And, and that can really get us in trouble here in these drier times, these drier summers. The more we take, the less we're going to have next time, whether it's grazing or whether it's with a, a brush hog or a mower of some kind. So we really need to be careful and not get those clipping heights down below that four inch either. Uh, I know that we're out there clipping, we're trying to kill weeds, we're trying to kill mall flower rows, and we're sort of mad at them and we want to get them out of there, but we got to remember the greater good and the, and the forage that's out there and we don't want to hurt it and hurt its chances to come back. And then just an update quick too about cool season annuals. You know, if, if any of you are thinking about planting some cool season annuals for the fall and winter grazing season, we need to keep on top of that, keep thinking about that. Here we are coming up to August 1st. Those seeding dates are going to be coming quicker than we think. And uh, I know that uh, there's been some shortages of some seeds out there, different different kinds of different species. So if we're thinking about that, we want, probably want to think ahead and, and go ahead and get that stuff ordered and, and get it ready and get it moving. Well, that's a wrap for this week's update. Uh, we'll end, as always, by thanking our sponsors. I, I do want to say quick, uh, when we started this whole deal, we never thought that it was going to last this long or go this long. We we had to pull the March uh, grazing meeting. We thought, well, we'll be a month or two, and, and then we'll be back to normal. We'll be back to, to uh, in-person meetings. And here we are coming into August, and we still haven't got back to full time. And uh, at that time, I, I said, well, you know, we'll just kind of do some weekly updates. We'll do some virtual pasture walks and, and be able to give you all the content that we need. And, I got to be honest. Now we're, we're we're getting to the point where we're running out of content. Some weeks we're running out of time, and we've got other things that need to get accomplished here in the next few weeks. So, if you don't hear from me, don't think you won't ever hear from me again. Uh, we're just getting to the point where we may have to slow up these updates and and hold them back to uh, once every two week or or even once a month with the virtual pasture walks. Uh, just because it's hot, it's dry, it's summer, and, and there isn't a whole lot of changes like there is in the spring. And, and maybe this is something we pick up hard at it again in the fall and winter if there's more updates. I, I think as we look into the future, we're going to kind of pull these updates as needed, try to stay on the cutting edge of what's going on out there in the in the field and what's going on out there on grazing operations and keep them current and I don't want to be just throwing out content uh, just for the sake of throwing out content. I want to keep things relative and, and keep, keep them relevant uh, to what you all are seeing out there in the field. So if you don't hear from me, it's not because I, I didn't want to. It's because we, we just wanted to make sure we weren't throwing out stuff that, that wasn't necessary. And, and we're busy here in the office. We want to make sure we get all of our other uh, <clears throat> responsibilities taken care of as time goes by. So. We'll see you next time.